it's about 6 a.m. I'm about to head on down and meet my classmates, I guess. Be the first time I met them. And uh, see how the day goes. Later on, I'll try to update you. Or I don't know, it may be a few days even before I put something together, but gonna head on down here soon and see what the day brings. But whatever y'all are doing, I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving and be safe. God bless. Got day one over with with the training. The guy downstairs gave me three more of those. I was asking if they had any coffee to buy and he said, it's free, the coffee's free. And gave me three more of those. But anyway, that was kind of gonna explain what all we did on our first day today. And I mean, I'm, I'm glad to have it over with really because it was a uh, meeting. I got to meet everybody, you know. I met them in the lobby this morning. I got up around five. 10 or something, 510. And we had to meet in the lobby at 6.30, or by 6.30, I got down there about six, met everybody, and then, um, anyways, what we did today, though, was uh, I met everybody, you know, for the first time, and uh, we well, they, we got in this, they call it, uh, it was a van that they had to take us there. We rode together. Um, then when we got there, we went in the classroom, we met our supervisors, and they went over a bunch of different information with us. It was mainly just classroom stuff today. And then um, they had a simulator. Uh, it, it looks like, a, you know, those arcade games where you drive a truck, has a steering wheel and everything. It looks like one of those, but it's a semi-truck simulator. So you sit down at it and like you got your mirrors to your left and right. And uh, it simulates actually driving a semi. And we had to not hit the curves and stuff like that. But it was an easy day all in all. <clears throat> so we did the simulator, then we did some classroom stuff. And a lot of their, their work is on our phone too. Like we, we brought our phones with us to class and they would send us stuff to our email. So they would send us stuff to our phone and uh, we would do it right there in class and had to go and do a hair follicle test. And uh, she just cut some of the hair off my arms. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, there's a straight line there now. But uh, did a hair follicle test and a pee test, urine test. And uh, lots of other people had theirs done already. I had already done a, a urine test for another company. And uh, by the time that everything was worked out for me to come this way, the woman said, well, I'm not gonna make you do it right now. I'll just, uh, my recruiter, she said, I'll just get you to do it when you get there. And so today they took me in a bus and we went out there to a place and they dropped me off. I gave my ID, they sent them some paperwork in. I did, I did the test there and everything, so. Stuff. everybody kind of introduced themselves we got to know one another a little bit and stuff and um so far so good i'm liking it a lot so far I'm tired again as you can tell my eyes are a little red a little bit sleepy tomorrow i think we're going to be doing a little more classroom but they said we may be looking at the trucks as well everybody keeps talking about pre-trip and they're saying that's kind of that's kind of a tough thing to get the hang of the pre-trip and uh it's nine pages i think and we've got to remember these things word for word. If we leave one word out, like say it says bent and broken, you know, if we leave bent out, we, we fail that, we get a point for it. And I think you're only allowed 28 points or something out of maybe like 140. But it seems like it's pretty strict on that part. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try to study, you know, here at the hotel. And me and some of my classmates here, we've, we've got one another's numbers now. All of us had iPhones and so, um, we can share con, you know, a, a group message and, uh, we're wanting to try to, they even told us at the school that it'd be smart to figure out the test and work on them together. Like one person gets a hundred on one test and they share those answers with everybody else. Another one works on another test and you share those answers back and forth. And that makes it a lot easier, you know, because what they called this is at the particular school I'm at, they said they have higher standards than, than lots of other schools because they're paying for your training. So, uh, 
like the, your air brakes here, you have to get 100% on or you fill it. Um, so, and then some of the other tests too, they're pretty strict, you know. It seems like it's, you, you've got to do your studying. So I've got quite a bit more studying to do and stuff like that. And <clears throat> I did okay on that simulator today, but I ran over the curb once on it. I didn't cut out quite far enough. I was kind of worried about cutting out too far because you don't want to leave a gap to your right to where a vehicle can come through. So I was trying to keep it close to the curb. At the same time, I, I, uh, I uh, got too close and ran over the curb. When I pulled up beside of it, I think I just needed to be farther away from it already. But uh, anyways, I'll, I'll try to keep you updated. I'm probably just going to make like week in increments now, like wait a whole week and then make a video, compile stuff together. That way I can do week one, week two, week three on this training series. And, and maybe that'll help some people that are interested in trying to uh, get get their CDL through paid training like this. Um, he, he said like usually 20% of the people in the class fail. So that's a pretty decent amount of people, you know, depending on the size of the class. But anyways, uh, I'm pretty tired. I'm probably going to sit back and drink me some coffee now. I've done talk to my wife and kids. I'll probably call them again. I've done eight a little bit. I'll probably call my wife and kids again before before bed and uh, try to get on a schedule somewhat here and get, get that worked out to where I've got my sleep schedule you know, working pretty well for me. Morning number two. Later on, I'll put some, I'll uh, put some more content together throughout the day and kind of talk about what we did and everything. Still kind of waking up, if you can't tell, but. <laughs> oh, really? It's like an hour north of Detroit. Yeah. But it's like, it's just, our roads are terrible. I don't know where you're from. Kentucky. Like, on normal roads, like that car feels amazing. Do that. Yeah, I, I appreciate I that a lot. That's smart because I'm going to study it like that tonight. Yeah, right. They, 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 it's a study exactly. Sheet. Yeah, that, I mean, I've seen him doing that. That's smart. Okay, so the coolant reservoir. I'm going to make sure it's properly mounted, secured, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not leaking. Check for coolant level here. And and color fill between the add and full indicators. Cap is tight. And then the oil level, level and filler, properly mounted and secure. There's the uh, filler, there's where I can check the level. Probably not secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, full. I would check for oil condition and level, not leaking. Air compressor and air lines. So the air compressor's back there where we can't see it. There's the air lines. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're properly mounted, secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, air lines, not cut or frayed, not leaking, air compressor, gear driven. And now the power steering pump, uh, probably mm -hmm. not secured, not cracked, not broken, uh, not damaged, not leaking, gear driven. Uh, water pump here, probably not secured, not cracked, not broken, not leaking, not damaged, hose attached properly, not cut, not frayed, and not leaking, belt driven. Entire frame and cross members from the front of the tractor to the rear of the tractor, probably not secure, not cracked, not bent, not broken, not damaged, no missing bolts, no illegal welds. Okay, the power steering fluid level and reservoir right here, probably not secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not leaking, fill between the add and full indicators. Um, cap is tight. And then steering gear box and hoses, um, probably not secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, both uh, high and low pressure lines, not cut or frayed, not leaking. And then the steering link, as it said. So the pitman arm right here, probably mass secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged. The drag link right there, probably mass secure, not cracked, not broken, not bent, not damaged. Uh, the steering knuckle right here, and that would be probably mass secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged. Tie rod and tie rod ends back there. Probably not secured, not cracked, not broken, not bent, not damaged. And then all the castle nuts and the cotter pins, probably not secured, not, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not missing an end please.
way to pack your laundry. As I bring my big bag with me, I just wrapped it up in this blanket. Carry it to a laundry man. I ain't seen our uh, trainer or the other girl yet. Oh, did you? Uh huh. Oh yeah, that's what I've been working on. I didn't know at all at first. Yeah, it passed that. You know, it still it was confusing when I was learning. I'm like, so surface breaks. You know when you gotta think like that, be like service brakes or these and these and connect. Pretty sun, sunrise. Here's the engine bay. I'm gonna check my coolant reservoir here, my power steering reservoir, my oil uh, feel and level. I'm gonna make sure those are all properly mounted, secured, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not leaking. I'm gonna make sure the caps are on tight. Um, I'm gonna make sure they're filled to the proper level, they're the proper color, and the proper condition. And from there, I'll go to my air compressor. It's gear driven, and and my airlines here. I'll make sure they're all properly mounted, secured, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, no cuts or frays in the airlines, and no leaking air. And from there, I will go to my power steering pump which is the hose here runs to it you can't see it it's gear driven that's properly mounted secured not cracked not broken not damaged uh not leaking um and then i'll go to the water pump here properly mounted secured not cracked not broken not damaged this is belt driven i want to make sure it's not leaking i want to make sure the hose is attached properly properly no cuts or leaks or frays in the hose and then from there, I will go to my frame down here and the cross members, which run from the front of the tractor to the rear tractor. Make sure that's properly mass secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not bent, no illegal welds and no missing bolts. And then from there, I'll go to um my steering gearbox here make sure that's properly mass secure not cracked not broken not damaged not leaking i'm going to make sure the high side hose over here and the low side hose over here are properly mass secured i'm going to make sure they have no cuts or frays and that they are not leaking and then from there i'll go to my steering linkage which consists of my uh pitman arm here my drag link there um steering steering knuckle here and then the tie rod and tie rod ends down here i'm gonna make sure they're all properly mass secured not cracked not broken not damaged not bent and then i'll go to my front suspension which is my spring mounts here the leaf springs there um the u-bolts there and then the shock absorber here. I wanna make sure those are all properly mounted secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not bent. I wanna make sure these uh, springs here, leaf springs have not shifted and, uh, and that they are in place. And I wanna make sure that this shock absorber is not leaking hydraulic fluid. Then from there, I'll go to my bre front brakes, um, which consists of my brake hose here. I wanna make sure this is probably mounted secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, no cuts or frays and no air leaks. I'm going to go to the brake chamber here, make sure that's properly mounted secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged, no dents, not leaking. And then from there, I'll go to my slack adjuster and push rods down here. 
I make sure they're properly mounted, secure, not cracked, not broken, not damaged. Um, no missing cotter pins or, or missing no missing clevis, and that there's no more than one inch of play in the slack adjuster. And that's all of that. Cab of the truck. So for the front tires, you'll need four 30 seconds tread. For the rear tires, two 30 seconds of tread, at least on, on, on the trailer here, all the way back. Passenger side, I'm gonna check all my hoses, make sure they're properly mounted and secured. I'm gonna make sure they're not cracked, not broken, not damaged, not cut or frayed, not leaking, and I'll make sure the clamps are tightened properly. Then from there, I'm gonna go to the exhaust system Starting with the manifold, running all the way to the tailpipe, I'm gonna make sure that's properly mounted, secured, not cracked, not broken, not damaged. I'm gonna make sure there's uh, no soot to indicate signs of leaking. And then from there, I'll go to my alternator over here. I'm gonna make sure that's properly mounted, secured, not cracked, not broken, not damaged. I'm gonna make sure there's no missing bolts. And I'm gonna make sure the electrical wires are not cut or frayed or corroded. And this alternator is belt driven, which consists of this alternator belt here and then i've also got a fan belt up here on the fan both of these need to be properly mounted secured not cracked not broken not damaged not cut or frayed and they need to have no more than one half of an inch to three quarters of an inch free play and that's pretty much all on this side Get the inside of these trucks out Ew. It's, it, these are pretty tall on the inside like you you could be a tall guy in here and have plenty of space for your head these are really tall on the inside so this is i think this is a 2019 freight liner which i didn't know until yesterday but the instructor told us that they're made by dodge um if i'm not mistaken dodge chrysler jeep and ram they're made by this one actually i think looks a little different than yeah, it sure does. This one actually looks a little different on the inside than the other one. Let's see the space they've got here. That's pretty cool. So I haven't seen the inside of this one. Uh -oh. I've locked that somehow. Yeah, I got my light. Here's the top bunk up there that folds down on this one. One of the windows that's covered right there. That one also got the cover on it. You see the lights up top. One seat back here. I believe these seats come off and this makes another bed here. This is where you know you'd want to be sleeping really. Or you could sleep on the top, I guess, but it's not moving. I think that's like a pad for a refrigerator there. I don't know what they got in this one, internet. It's like that one has like an internet hookup in it. I know the other one I seen had like two outlets um, to where you could hook up a mini fridge and then I'll probably get an air fryer, speaker, Passenger seat, driver's seat. There's a little closet. It's pretty cool. I guess that's just for airflow, I'm guessing. Here's some control back here for when you're sleeping back here. You've got your heat and air. You've got an, a power outlet there. Charge your phone. Looks like it's just another little airflow vent. Okay. Your fan setting over there, settings over there. And then just the front cab of the truck. Pretty nice truck. Really, I, don't, I think this one's older model than the one I looked at the other day. Storage up there as well. Up here, overhead storage. Close this closet. 
so you could put like a microwave or something in here this would probably be a perfect spot if there's an outlet there is a an outlet there but i don't think that would work for um, a microwave but if you could that would be a perfect spot spot to put some food some stuff there there's even a compartment down below here I think that's just a speaker event down there, maybe a vent. I'm not sure that or a speaker. And then up there is where you would hang your curtain, I think. The other one had that in it, actually. The dash. Your gauges there, CD player, air brake and parking brake there. I still can't even remember what that thing is. I'm on my, today is my fifth day here. I can't remember what that thing's called. Yeah, I haven't had to use it a lot. I've used it some, a few times. Looks like some kind of lock box there. Place some for sunglasses, papers and stuff. So it's got quite a bit of storage in there. A person could live comfortably in this thing easily. Yeah, it's warm <laughs> inside, yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, he, now he's finally saying that. Before he was like, "This is swimming weather." <laughs> to hear him say it's cold. Yeah. Because yeah, he used to live in the cold. All right, today's day five for me, and all my classmates. And it's been I've met some uh, very friendly people since I've been here. Every day kind of wears you out, even though today was a half day. What we're doing is we're um, we're going. Uh, so we're getting up in the morning. Usually I get up around 5.30 or so. And uh, I'll go downstairs to the hotel uh, like lobby area. And they have like a, well, a cafeteria area down there is usually where I go. And we have breakfast. They have good breakfast here too. They have really good breakfast. And that's all included, you know, with this. Rail takes care of that for us. So we'll go downstairs, get our breakfast, eat. And then we're carpooling together from here, you know. So me and two other guys get get in a vehicle together and we ride from here about five minutes away or so to the uh, to rail. Um, and uh, once we get there, you know, the first day we would go to the classroom and now we usually go straight out to the truck when we get there. We'll go out to the trucks and we'll work on our pre-trip, which is going over, you know, all of the components of the truck, the parts and what they're for, what you're looking for in them what you know what kind of things uh can go wrong with them that you need to be aware of and stuff and and we go over it again and again and again because it's a lot to remember and it's something that you just kind of got to keep going over in your head again and again and again to really uh, for it to really uh, set in and and uh, for you to retain it and so we're working together and it's helping a lot and then when we get where we get back to the hotel they they give us work to do there too this is uh, considered an accelerated program you know they call it like accelerated training so they said like what some it takes some people to do five weeks or something like that they're doing they're making us do it in three and um i actually think it's actually less than three the weeks all together but uh so we're working together and that's helping a whole lot and as I said, lots of everybody has been friendly in the, everybody in my group so far. I think there's eight of us all together, maybe seven now. I think one guy went home. Um, but everybody has been friendly so far. And everybody's been helpful to one another, you know, for the most part. From what I can tell, everybody's been helpful. And I wish the best for all these people, you know. They're, uh, this is, I've never, I've not been to Indiana much. Um, but since I've been here, I've met a lot of friendly people. Um, so, and once we get there, you know, we, uh, like, uh, yesterday was our first time actually getting out on the road and driving. And that was very interesting. You know, these big trucks, these, uh, when you're pulling a trailer, that's, I think 54 foot long, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you're pulling that, you know, and you go around a curve, you, you gotta, I pulled trailers for years, but it's different when you're pulling one that long. Um, you've really got to know what you're doing with the turns. You've got to cut wide, you know, cut wide enough to where you won't run over the curb, but not cut so wide to where you go into the other lane, you know, the opposite lane. And uh, so they'll score you on all that stuff too. Like I, we was down in the lobby and there's, see, we've been here now for five days. So our first week is pretty much over because 
for Thanksgiving, uh, they, they let us do a half day today, which is Friday. Tomorrow, Saturday, we're off, and Sunday, we're off. Usually, Saturday, we'd be doing a half day then, too, but we're, it's uh, Thanksgiving, they're letting us off. So, we're, we got full, all day Saturday and Sunday off. But what we're planning to do is go out there tomorrow and work on our pre-trip some more, because they told us whenever we want to come out there and work on our pre-trip, we can. They said we are, uh, you know, uh, rail employees now. They, they done gave us our badges and stuff, you know, and... Uh, so we're, I guess we are considered rail employees already. So anyways, we got to drive some and we, and the day before that we got to drive in the yard, you know, there at rail. And we just backed around the whole yard, which is a big yard. We just worked on our backing and we're having good, pretty good with the trailer already. That wasn't very hard for me, the backing part, honestly. I think I did pretty well with that. And like a lot of that guy, he, the, our uh, instructor stood outside the truck while we did it and he kind of pointed which way to go. And for my, uh, classmates who were with me you know he kind of led them but for me you know he's seen how i did on the simulator and he said oh you you know what you're doing you know and he said i'm gonna have to watch you he was kind of just joking with me he's a really friendly guy and then whenever we were uh actually doing it at the yard he said oh michael he, he called me michael some of them call me michael where that's my first name and some of my i've told some people you know i go by dylan so some call me dylan and some call me mike he said oh my uh, michael's driving now or something like that and uh so he said, you, you just do your thing. He said, he said, just do your thing. And, and, uh, he didn't really tell me too much, but there was one point to where I was, when I was trying to cut around, when I was backing up and trying to cut around a, a big concrete block, my front end was getting too close to a fence on my right side that the concrete block was on my left. So I had to kind of reset there and he, he, uh, kind of helped me with that part. He kind of led me in and I'm glad. Because even though I know how to pull a trailer, when you're pulling one that long, you've got to do certain maneuvers and stuff uh, in order to make it work. You really do. And they make it look very easy. And I, and I think after a while, it will get a lot easier, you know. But we watched many safety videos and stuff as well. And um, you, you realize when you watch these videos how dangerous these trucks really are. Like they said, you're, you're, driving a, you're not driving a car. You're driving a commercial vehicle. They said all your, you know, many of your habits that you got in a regular vehicle, you have to break those when you're driving one of these. It's completely different, you know. It's a whole different game. Um, so you've got to break a lot of your habits whenever you're you're driving one of these trucks. And that what, something they told us too, they said, you know, don't don't uh, act like you're driving a truck. Act like you're pulling a trailer because that's what you're doing, you know. Yeah, you if you're just driving the truck alone and don't have that trailer, you can take that right turn and as long as you clear it, you're good. But if not, your via, your trailer is going to uh you may clear it with your tractor which is the truck your tractor uh you may clear that curve with it but then your trailer goes over goes over top of it you know a big time and it could be a person standing there a little kid it could be a pole it could be a fire hydrant whatever you know so you really got to learn to turn these things and something one of the trainers said today i really liked what he said and i agreed with him a whole lot um because i'm doing regional many of the people are doing um Many of the people are doing uh, national, and then um, I'm also doing van, dry van, and I'm kind of glad I did, honestly, um, because one of the trainers there today, or instructors yesterday, told me that uh, they did, he didn't think they had much in Kentucky for uh, national, when it, or uh, for regional, when it came to uh, flatbeds. So he said, yeah, there's not really a lot for flatbeds regional in, in that area. So I'm glad that I went with dry van, honestly, and, um, and, and regional, which means I'll be working five days and off too. And uh, my instructor that I had yesterday, he, he told me that's what he's done for the last 10 years. Well, actually, he said he started out regional, and then for the last 10 years here in Chicago, which is he said is one of the worst places to drive in the city, he said uh, in Chicago, um, for the last 10 years, he's done local, which means, you know, you're, you're out during the day, but you're home every night. And that's what I want in the long run. That for me personally, that's what I want. Um, and I want to be, I want to see my wife and kids, you know, I'm more worried about them than I am all kinds of money. You know, I don't need all kinds of money. I just want to have, I'm happy to do this job. I'm, I'm actually loving this training. I'm really enjoying it. It's working out great. I met a lot of friendly people. I'm excited. I'm gonna to get to drive the truck home too. That's so that's pretty neat. Um, like uh, once I'm once I'm done with everything, you know, and I get my own truck, I'm gonna be able to drive that truck home and park it there. They said as long as you have the parking, that's fine. And I've got plenty of parking where we're at, so that's awesome. I'm very happy about that. Um, but yeah, as I said, one of the instructors, what he said today in class, I really liked it, and he said, you know, 
Um, when you're out on the, he said, uh, if you've got kids, you know, nat, uh, regional or uh, local is what you need to try to do. He said, because uh, when they're little kids, he said, you know, he said, once they get older, it's a little different, you know, he said, but when they're, when, when they're little kids, when you've got one year olds and stuff like that, he said, all they know is that uh, mommy or daddy is away, you know, they don't know why, they don't understand why, all they know is you're gone. And I really liked what he said that, because I agree with that entirely, you know. They don't understand why. Yeah, so maybe to a certain extent, some of them do. But like Nevaeh, my baby, she don't understand why I'm gone right now. All she knows is that I'm gone. And she hasn't seen her daddy now for five days. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying the truth, you know. So I want to be home as much as I can with my wife and children. Um, I want as much home time as I can get. So eventually, that's what I'm going for is local, you know. I have to be on the road my first year with this contract. That's what I signed up for. So, But I'll be regional. So I'll be gone five days and home too. Um, but that will be, and, and I say my first year, it's 120,000 miles, which may take, it'll probably take me longer than that where I'm regional. The national guys will probably hit that number quicker because they're out, you know, on the road longer than I am. But, uh, and then my goal after that is to do local. And like, as I said, maybe later on, if I feel it's worth it to do it on my own, I may do that as well. Like owner operator, I've talked to some guys about it and some of them, it seemed like it was, uh, they took some great losses trying that. So, I mean, there's a lot to truck, and if I, if I learn enough about it and I feel confident enough, maybe later on down the road I will, years down the road, but if not, I'm satisfied with driving for a company because you're still pretty much working for yourself. You're driving a truck, you got your own space. Um, if you want more time, they'll give it to you from what I've heard, you know. Uh, so, and it's always going to be in demand, high demand, I believe, trucking will. There's a high turnover rate in, in the trucking industry, was what they told us the other day. But yeah, I've met a lot of uh, very uh, knowledgeable instructors who have a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience. They care about you, you know, you can tell that some of them really do. They want to see you do good. And uh, like they've told it, they're, they're straightforward with you. You know, they, they tell us, look, uh, we're, our job, we're not a school. They say that a lot. We're not a school. They, uh, that we're gonna, we're going to train you, but it's up to you what you do with that. You know, it's up to you in your free time if you're going to do the all the work that we give you when you're at the hotel. Because they give us a, we download a, a rail app on our phones, and they give us work to do on there, and that has to be completed too. You have to do that. And then our pre-trip hat, we've got to be able to pass that. We've got to be able to pass the air brakes and everything. Like that. And then our CDL test on week three, we've got to be able to pass that. After my three weeks are up, I'll go home for, I think they said seven to 10 days. And then after that, um, I'll be going out with a trainer on the road who's gonna meet me in Kentucky, they said. And I'll be out on the road, I think, at that point for, they said anywhere, I think from two weeks to a month, but they said usually it's closer to a month. And uh, so I'm hoping, you know, to get a lot of a valuable experience with the trainer in that month. But I'm going to take my time with this. I'm not going to try to drive fast and, and do all this stuff. These trucks can kill you very quick or you can kill other people very quick with them. It's no joke. They can tip. You know, I think 50% of deaths, for what they told us, 50% of truckers dying is them rolling their trucks over, you know. So once that truck starts to go, the trailer starts to go, uh, There's that from what they say, there's no pulling them back over. Once they start to go, they go and they pull the truck with them. And uh, all that weight and all that force, it just men get killed a lot doing it. Um, they showed us lots of videos that were kind of just, I mean, it's kind of disturbing really, but I mean, it just shows you how easy it can happen. Guys looking down at their phones for like five seconds, why I don't understand why you would be driving a commercial truck like that and looking down at your phone. Well, for like eight seconds, one guy, and he hit somebody head on and killed him. A dad who had a family at home and the guy's in prison right now, I think. He was actually speaking in the video, so. Um, they have cameras on, on these uh, trucks too. So if you do like a hard break or something, it activates that camera. Or if you do something to set the camera off, if you even got your phone in your hand, that activates the camera and they'll see, you know, and you can get in a lot of trouble or fired for it, you know, even probably even put in jail, I would think for certain things. So I'm gonna take it very serious. That's why I'm gonna get me a GoPro and put that on my head and I plan to use that. My phone will probably just be mounted to the dash, you know, but I am excited about it, I am. I'm excited about later on showing you know, a tour of the truck and everything that I get and showing you showing you all uh, me getting to bring it home and everything and then di and then doing my routes, you know. My cousin sent me a video the other day and I think he said he was on the longest bridge in the world in Louisiana driving across it. And that's pretty neat. Uh, I'll be glad, if he opens his channel, I'll be I'm looking forward to seeing that too. He's talking about maybe opening a YouTube channel. 
some of these other guys here have also talked about it. Uh, they feed us good, you know, we come here, that we get free breakfast, we get free lunch, you just have to provide your dinner at night time, but honestly, lots of times, by the time I eat the breakfast and lunch, I'm, I'm pretty good, you know, for the night. Um, it's already about to get dark here, which at 4.30, I've never seen it get dark at 4.30 in Kentucky ever, I don't think, unless it was storming or something, you know, but that's, the, at the time here is like, it's either an hour behind or an hour ahead of Kentucky, I'm not sure which, here in Indiana. So uh, I think it's 4.30 here. When it's 4.30 here, it's 5.30 in Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken, which is the, about the earliest I've ever seen it get dark in Kentucky is about 5.30. Here, though, 4.30, it's getting dark already. So, And by the time we get off work, it's 5 o'clock usually. We work, usually work 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So um, it's usually dark when we go in, you know, and then dark when we get out. But uh, I'm loving it so far. I am. I'm excited about this. This is a great career. It's a it's a it's a great job, you know. If it's 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 something that as well, if you wanted to take on yourself, there's lots of potential, and you're doing great uh, for yourself in this. Um, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm 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 really loving this. I enjoy it a lot so far. I do. I'll be glad to uh, get home and see my family too, though I miss them very bad. So yeah, national is something I would never want to do with a family. That's me personally. I would never want to do national with a family. Me personally. Uh, my time with them is more precious than the money to me by far. So um, I, what I want uh, is right now regional, you know, eventually I want local to where I'm home every night. You know, I want to see my kids every day. So I'm getting through this actually surprisingly well, though, honestly. Like I've just, I've just felt so positive this whole time. I've not been letting the, you know, myself get down, you know. And then the people here, uh, we all kind of talk about our goals and stuff like that and why we, we're, we came here and stuff and, trying to help one another get through this and everything. And I wish the best for all these people. I truly do. I hope God blesses them in it. They've got families, many of them themselves. And uh, we, we've all kind of talked about things. And yeah, it's, it's I'm, I'm really liking uh, uh, some of the conversations that we've had together, you know, and stuff. But I wish the best for all these people here. And I'm just I'm looking forward to continuing this journey. You know, this is week one. I plan we've got three weeks here, so I plan to make three videos on this for each week. And then when I go home, you know, uh, I'll be there for a while. Then my trainer, I'm hoping I can record that as well with my trainer. He may not want me to, so I may not be able to. Um, but if not, then I'll continue recording once I get my own truck. And I'm really looking forward. That's the main thing I'm looking forward to is getting my own truck, or getting you know a truck to use for myself. You know. It's their truck, but you, being able to use it for myself, have my own space in it, my own living space, and being able to just go out and see the world and make money and get my experience and learn as much as I can and uh, fulfill my contract, you know, get that done. And then after that, uh, I think that'll open up a lot of opportunities. Just after one year, I believe that that opens up some opportunities for you, you know, once I complete my contract with them. And I may end up staying with them, and I, I, I may end up going somewhere else. I'm not sure, but regardless, I plan to continue doing this. I'm really liking it so far. I'm not even really into it, but the training I'm, I'm loving. I'm excited about it. I'm learning a lot. They're, they're, it really is accelerated. You learn a lot here. Um, so as, as I've said before in the other videos, if you're thinking about trying to get your CDL and you're wondering how, uh, you can you can get uh, paid training to where they pay you. You don't have to pay for the training. They pay you to train. You just have to sign a contract with them, which is valuable as well. That's a lot of your time you're dedicating to them, you know, on the road. It has to be on the road. Um, so, but it, to me, it's well worth it. You know, you get your CDL this way and uh, and through that a career if you want it. Uh, that CDL opens up so many doors. It doesn't have to be just a semi-truck driver with a CDL. You know, you can be a dump truck driver. You can be a trash truck driver, a uh, school bus driver, which I think there's other things you have to do with a school bus, but... CDLA is what I'm getting though, so uh, mine is a tractor trailer is what I'm going after, you know. And uh, I'll be driving at least for the first year. If they do end up later on having uh, local jobs in my area for flatbed, I may end up moving to flatbed because honestly, I would probably like flatbed better because I like hands-on stuff, you know, where you can get you got to get out and tarp it and stuff and uh, put uh, straps and chains I think on it and stuff. So, but uh, to me, I might would like that better. So. 
I'm going to try to probably start working out a little bit, at least doing push-ups and stuff, maybe sit-ups every day because I'm used to, you know, uh, doing physical work, but the trucking is really not physical, especially if you're not doing flatbeds. So I, I plan to try to at least work out a little bit. Uh, but until next time, I hope you had a blessed Thanksgiving. I hope you have a blessed Christmas to come. Um, I'm thankful for everybody who's who's been supportive and everything, and I wish you all the best in your lives with your journey as well. And uh, God bless.